There are a lot of conservatives, and I hear this all the time, who believe that the mainstream media is an arm of the Democrat Party. If you believe that, and there's a good chance you do, you're making a deadly mistake because you've got it exactly backwards. Let me explain. The mainstream media is not the media arm of the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party is the political arm of the mainstream media. And if you don't understand that, you can't understand what's happening in the country right now. So it's a very important point. The Democrat Party is the political arm of the mainstream media. Let me explain how that's happened in this Republic of ours. When I was an undergraduate, and I started in 1969, the conventional wisdom was that the media, the press media for the most part, and lesser extent the television media, was the fourth branch of government. You had the executive, the judicial, the legislative branch, and then you had this unofficial, quasi-official fourth branch, the press. And what the press did was to keep an eye on challenge and balance in the scheme of, you know, the balance of powers, sharing of powers within federal authority, to keep the government in check. It was part of these checks and balances that were going on. All that began to change with Watergate. In 1964, the Democrats won a huge victory over Barry Goldwater and the Republicans. By 1968, the party was in a state of near collapse. Anybody who was cognizant then, and I was, watched the Chicago Convention of 1968, the rioting in the streets, the whole world's watching, Dan Rather getting roughed up on the floor of the convention, knew that the Democrats were in turmoil. You had the Vietnam War, you had the, the race riots of 68 following all the assassinations of, of King and Kennedy, and you had Lyndon Johnson withdrawing from the race when he, he was expected to be reelected. And the Democrats were struggling to find a candidate. You had Gene McCarthy running from the left, and you had Hubert Humphrey, sort of the conventional Democrat candidate, and Humphrey ultimately secured the nomination. And Humphrey's running against Richard Nixon. Now, Richard Nixon was not a very popular politician at any point. Uh, he had been vice president two terms under Eisenhower. He'd run in 1960 against Kennedy and lost. He'd run for governor of California and lost to Pat Brown, Jerry Brown's father. And here he is sort of resurrecting himself in 1968, the new Nixon, as it was called, trying to make a political comeback. And he won. And he won because of all the turmoil. He won because of many of the things that were going on in the street. Got Goldwater and Republicans got about 4% of the black vote in 1964. Nixon got 12% in 1968, and as much as 15% in uh, 1972. And he, he beat Humphrey in 68, and then he slaughtered Humphrey, or he slaughtered uh, McGovern in 1972. So what happened to Nixon? What brought Nixon down? Well, the short answer is his own behavior. I mean, the guy was a crook. But setting that aside, what really brought him down was the media. You know, the Washington Post, Watergate, the scandal, the investigations. And what that showed to the media, most importantly, was that whereas the Democrats could not beat Richard Nixon, they failed in 68, they failed even bigger in 72. The party was in turmoil after that defeat. It was the media that destroyed Richard Nixon. And what they did was shift the balance of power between the, the liberal-leaning, consensus-driven media and the Democrat Party. And from that point on, the media began to become more important and in many ways more powerful than the Democrat Party itself. Now, that didn't happen overnight, and it's been something that's been going on now for, for you know, close to a half century. But I think we're at the point now where the media is in control. And the Democrat Party is simply the political arm, the political extension of the mainstream media elites who believe they run this country. I say that because in many ways they do. They tell us what to think. 
They tell us how to vote. They tell us how to dress. They tell us what's acceptable. They tell us what's unacceptable. They define racism. They even define race. They decide who's black, who's a real woman, who's a real homosexual. They tell us what size drinks we should get, whether or not we should smoke. They want to tell us all these things because they see themselves as the elites. They see themselves as the, our betters. The rest of us just live in flyover country where we're morons, where we're uneducated. They laugh at us on TV. It's not just the Democrats who do this. It's not the Democrats who provide the talking points and give them to the media. It's the media that develops the talking points, spread them around amongst themselves, and then give them to the Democrat candidates to repeat. Climate change is an existential threat. The Republicans are pouncing or any of the other things that they focus on. They believe they know what's best for this country. They want to run this country. They don't want to bother to run for office. They use Democrats to do that for them. The Democrats, as I said, are the political arm of the mainstream media elites. Now, do you want some proof? You want some evidence? What's well, right in front of you? It's called Kamala Harris. If you go back and you look at the period before the primaries, who was the favored candidate in the media? If you looked at the media and you read the press and you watched the news and TV and MSNBC and CNN, who was their favorite candidate of all the people running? Kamala Harris. They loved her. She was it. She was the female version of Barack Obama. She was going to do it just like Barack had. And what happened? Her campaign was a disaster. It was so bad, so mismanaged, so lackluster, except for one brief moment when she, of all persons, kicked Joe Biden around pretty well, that by the time you get to 2020 and the beginning of the primary season, she had to end her campaign. She was gone. She never really made it. She remained on the ballot. She probably picked up a couple of delegates here and there. But she was never a serious candidate. If you look at all the people who went into that race, she was, without question, the biggest bust. So why is she on the ticket today? Why is she Biden's vice presidential pick? Besides the fact she's a woman of color. There were other women of color he could have picked. Why did he pick Kamala Harris? Because she's the media darling. She's the media favorite. She's the person that the media wanted all along. And they know if Joe does manage to win somehow, he's not going to last. And then she'll be president, which is what they wanted before the primaries. Now, of course, the people rejected her. When I say the people, I'm not talking about Republicans. I'm talking about Democrats. She got no traction. She wasn't an attractive candidate. She wasn't someone who ex exuded energy to the electorate. They weren't falling all over her. They were much more excited about uh, Elizabeth Warren in some ways, which is beyond me. Or I can see, to some extent, Pete, uh, Mayor Pete. But she was totally unexciting. And she was rejected overwhelmingly by Democrat voters. So why the hell do you put her on the ticket? How else can you explain it? What was her constituency? It wasn't black women. It wasn't black voters writ large. It wasn't the progressive left. It wasn't the moderate part of the party. So who was for Kamala Harris to get her on that ticket? The media. It's the only explanation. The media loved her before she failed. They loved her after she failed. So they had Joe put her on the ticket. And they're able to do that because, as I said, the Democrat Party is, has been reduced to the role that it plays as the political arm of the mainstream media. And you have to understand that. If you think it's the Democrats control the media, you've got it backwards. And if you want to understand what we're up against in this country today, what's happening on the streets today, what's happening in the media, you have to understand it's the media that's the root of the problem, not the Democrat Party.
the Democrat Party, they're just the minions of the media. They're the tools of the media. They're the running dogs of the media. The media is the focus. Trump understands that. That's why he's always complaining about the media. That's why he says openly that the media is the threat to the United States. They're in many ways the enemy of the people. And that's what they are. They're a political group that wants power, thinks they know how to run the country the best, but doesn't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to take the time off from the screens. They don't want to give up their jobs. They don't want to actually run for office. They've got their lackeys to do it for them. And Joe Biden is a lackey. Kamala Harris is a lackey. They're all just the lackeys of the mainstream media elite who are linked to the larger elites in this country. But that's a whole other video. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Uh, give a video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification button. You'll know when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, as we confront the resistance, keep fighting.